EU starch producers make full use of the EU crops we process to produce bio-based ingredients used by food, feed, fuel and industrial sectors to create a variety of products we use in our daily lives. But have you ever wondered how these ingredients are made? Our production involves several stages, each producing a unique ingredient. It all starts with the arrival of sustainably sourced raw materials, such as wheat, maize and potatoes at our plants. Wheat is first ground. Water is then added and finally it is centrifuged and sieved to separate its various components. Maize is first cleaned and then ground with water. From this mixture, the various parts are separated and extracted. Potatoes are cleaned and grated into ultra-fine shreds. From these shreds, starch grains are extracted, which are again cleaned before processing. After this first phase, the various elements of the raw materials are ready for further processing. The bulk of what is extracted is starch slurry, a milky mixture of starch and water. But we also have extracted proteins and fibres. These proteins and fibres are widely used in innovative applications in specialised food and animal feed. For the starch slurry, there are three main options we can choose from. The first is native starches, which are obtained by drying the starch slurry, turning it into a white powder. Native starches are used in a broad range of applications in everyday food preparation, as well as in many industrial applications. Alternatively, the starch can be roasted or cooked, or treated with certain chemicals that help give it specific properties. These are called modified starches. These are used in food preparations to improve, for example, their resistance to cooking temperature changes, as well as extending shelf life. It is also used in many industrial applications. A small part of the starch, or residue left over from production, is fermented and distilled into bioethanol for biofuels or disinfectants. Finally, roughly half of the starch slurry goes to produce starch-based sugars and other derivatives. Starch-based sugars and sweeteners are obtained by hydrolysis, a process similar to human digestion. Enzymes are added to the starch slurry, breaking down the long glucose chains which starch is made up of. This produces ingredients of varying sweetness and physical properties. The degree of hydrolysis is called dextrose equivalence, or DE, and is expressed in a 1 to 100 scale. 1 to 3 is almost intact starch with no sweetening power. 100 indicates complete hydrolysis into dextrose with a higher sweetening power. From a light hydrolysis, we produce maltodextrins, a complex carbohydrate composed of relatively long chains of glucose molecules with no or very low sweetening power. Maltodextrins are used in many food formulations and their solubility make them particularly suitable for certain specialised applications. Continuing hydrolysis a little longer, we break down the glucose molecule chains to simple carbohydrates, obtaining starch-based sugars. The first of these are glucose syrups with a DE higher than 20. These are used for the texture, taste and glossiness they bring to food products. Breaking down the glucose chains all the way to individual molecules, we obtain pure glucose, also known as dextrose. Dextrose is used for its energy content and relatively low sweetening properties, being less sweet than table sugar. Along the hydrolysis process, we can turn some of the glucose into fructose through a process called isomerization. Isomerization uses specific enzymes that turn part of the glucose into fructose, resulting in sweeter blends called glucose fructose or fructose glucose syrups. These syrups are primarily used in soft drinks and confectionery. We can also produce polyols or sugar alcohols such as sorbitol, mannitol, maltitol or erythritol. This is done through hydrogenation or fermentation of sugars. 
producing sugar-free sweeteners with unique characteristics, such as being low calorie and not causing dental caries. Polyols are mostly used in foods with reduced sugars and calories, but also in a variety of personal care applications. Well, we hope this has answered some of your questions on how we make the more than 600 ingredients that we offer customers and consumers every day. From plant to product to a multitude of applications, thanks to constant innovation, starch producers ensure circularity and near zero waste of our precious agricultural raw materials. This information was brought to you by Starch Europe Plant-Based Solutions. Want to know more? Visit www.starch.eu